Infections are so common, more common than you would ever even realize. It, it's amazing how, how many infections are, are out there and how many illnesses that can be uh, caused by infections. So uh, some of these infections are pathogenic and this is why I like to do the testing. Uh, this means they can kill you. So this is pretty serious. Now, in this section, we're really going to be focusing on uh, Helicobacter pylori, uh, parasi parasites, and Candida. So let me tell you a little bit about the Helicobacter pylori infection. Again, very common. Uh, Helicobacter pylori is a bacteria that can grow in your stomach, again, through stress. Again, stress will bring on uh, these opportunistic organisms. So. Uh, what can happen with Helicobacter pylori is it can develop, your stomach can develop ulcers or it doesn't have to develop ulcers and you can still have the Helicobacter pylori. It could uh, bur burrow deep into the lymphoid tissues, uh, getting into the lungs and causing lung disease, also heart attack and stroke. And this is actually a recent finding that infections can do this, uh, which is so interesting because of course we always thought it, it was, uh, or the doctors would say it was high cholesterol or fat. Uh, now we know that also the uh, infections can trigger uh, these types of illnesses. So uh, one of the things that uh, you want to do, or actually let's talk about the symptoms of a Helicobacter pylori infection. The, the symptoms can range from uh, absolutely no symptoms at all, which is pretty scary, to acid reflux, burping, belching, constipation, diarrhea, nausea, uh, just a lot of different types of symptoms with this. Uh, but having no symptoms at all is, is really scary. So how do we get these things? Why do we get these things? Well, we get these things, of course, because we're under stress, and again, they're an opportunistic organism. But uh, how can you get them? Well, you can get them from eating undercooked food, like let's say sushi or raw egg. Uh, you can get them from kissing somebody that, that has it. Again, it's a bacteria, so it's very easy to transport, unfortunately. Uh, so uh, one thing to consider, uh, and I, I, I often see this, if one person in the family has it, they generally all have it. So I end up uh, working with the whole family. Now, you'd want to do this because you can get reinfected. Now, you might even have a family member that has no symptoms. Uh, like I said, you can have no symptoms and still have the Helicobacter pylori. So it's, it's important that everybody test in your family for this. Now, it, it's really, uh, this, again, this is my belief that it's important to work with the H. pylori by diet and supplementation. There's some great herbs that work very well for it. And also, you may need to see your physician and he might want to prescribe uh, antibiotics for it. So let's talk about uh, parasites and what I'm talking about when we talk about parasites or when I'm talking about parasites is this. It, it, it's a very broad range from microscopic to uh, worms. So uh, and, and note that 10% uh, of parasites are actually visible. So a lot of them are not, are not visible. Now, when we're talking about parasites, what the concern here for me, and this is why I encourage everybody to be tested, is they can be pathogenic. Again, they can kill you. Uh, some of you may need some antibiotics if, if you uh, come positive on uh, one of the tests. So uh, you might need to consult with your physician for the antibiotics. Now, how do we actually get them? This is, it, this is kind of uh, interesting for me, as I always, when I talk about parasites, people are, are kind of in denial saying, oh, I would never get any type of uh, infection. How could I possibly get that? So let's kind of cover this subject a little bit in more in depth and give you some examples. One way uh, is generally through fecal contamination. So you're saying, oh, how, how would that ever happen? Again, very, very easy. And let's give you an example for this. Let's say you go to a restaurant. You order a chicken salad. So uh, the chef is preparing your chicken salad. How do you know he washed his hands before touching the lettuce? How do you know he's wearing gloves? You, you really don't. Now, the Giardia is a parasite, again, a very uh, pathogenic parasite. It's very easy to get. And the Giardia cyst can live underneath the fingernail for six months. So let's just say that the chef had a Giardia cyst. The cyst drops in the salad. 
you eat the salad, you've been under chronic stress. Again, a, uh, it's a opportunistic organism, and it's very easy, again, to get and enter the system because the, the barrier is not real protected in there. Uh, another way, you go to the bathroom, you're in the restaurant, you go to the bathroom, you wash your hands because, of course, you're very conscientious. So you touch the doorknob to leave the restroom. You don't know if that doorknob is clean or not. Again, it's my, a lot of these are microscopic. You can't smell it. You can't really see it. You uh, pick your teeth or maybe scratch your eye. It's very easy to get. Uh, children, gee whiz, children, uh, they play in the playground. Animals uh, go to the bathroom on the grass or in the sandbox. And you know kids, they're all over the place. They, they not, they're not exactly clean. They put things in their mouth. Very easy to get. Uh, get infected this way. So if kids have it, generally you'll have it. Again, this is one another uh, infection that I see that, that spread throughout the household. And generally when I see one person have it, I, I really encourage everybody to get tested. Now what are some of the symptoms? Again, you can have absolutely no symptoms at all. So you can be a carrier and you can keep reinfecting those people that are actually taking care of the infection or the parasite um, infection. So weight gain, weight loss could be a symptom. A diarrhea, constipation, hormone imbalances, fatigue, brain fog, uh, heart problems, asthma, skin rashes, um, grit in your eyes. Uh, they also can be cyclic. <clears throat> so you may not even, again, understand what's going on, but around the full moon is generally when the parasites are most active. They like to lay their eggs in the intestines. And you might notice that you might be a little bit more irritated or the, the, the colon is having more of a problem. You're not going to the bathroom as well or you're having diarrhea. Something is, is uh, just different with you. So this is something that might be homework for you to see around the full moon if you, if you do react to anything. Now they can also be cyclic in a two-week period. So, or or it, you might not have any action for a couple months. So again, it's probably a good idea just to get tested to see if this is something that you've been infected with. Again, opportunistic organism, just like Helicobacter pylori. So again, when we're under stress, we're more prone to getting these uh, types of infections. Candida is a yeast-like fungus that is part of the normal flora of the intestines. Uh, overgrowth can occur with too much sugar uh, and also uh, antibiotic overuse. Now, also medications, hormones, parasites, and bacterial overgrowth can also uh, pr proliferate the, the candida. Symptoms are yeast infections, carbohydrate cravings, uh, sometimes blurry visions, headaches. Uh, they could be having uh, bowel problems, weight issues, and sugar ups and downs, and of course fatigue. And they have an abnormal amount, like I said, of, of sugar cravings so that they'd want to eat more uh, not necessarily even cakes or candies, but it could even be bread. Now, if the diet is only addressed with the candida, it's just my opinion that it's, it's not going to be taken care of. My feeling is get rid of the uh, infections like H. pylori and bacterial infections, and most likely the candida will get reduced. If that's not the case, the candida can be what's called a primary problem, and that's a very serious issue. You may need to go to the doctor to get that taken care of. This is very difficult to get rid of. Now, to order the test uh, for these infections, Helicobacter pylori, parasites, and candida, uh, I would suggest to get the GI pathogen screen test, which includes the Helicobacter pylori. That is the number 401HB. Uh, and you can also call the office. You can get this online. Read the test information on my website and listen to the video on testing for more information. You know, I really hope you like this information and I hope that um, it shed some light on maybe something that you're going through and feel free to give me a call and set up a nutrition interview. Thank you.